What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out ten biggest mistakes WWE made with Hell in a Cell. I can tell you the easiest biggest mistake they've made with the Hell in a Cell match, turning it into a pay per view on its own. That's the biggest mistake WWE has ever done to this match, and also turning the cell red. I, I'm not a big fan of the color change. I think they should just kept the steel look, but definitely them turning it into a pay per view has diminished the Hell in a Cell quality, in my opinion. I think I always figured the Hell in a Cell is a feud ending match. This is where two people despise each other so much that they're willing to go through hell to end one another. That's what I always thought it would be. And it's turned into more of a gimmick pay-per-view. So, and Hell in a Cell is today as of me filming this. We will also be doing a live stream reaction on the Clutch Going Road page. I'm gonna link down the uh, live stream uh, link in the first comment, I'm gonna pin it. Um, unfortunately, guys, we got another strike on the uh, main page. We just got off a strike last week, so they gave us another strike, so we can't post on the main and the clutch page for another two weeks. But we do have some news and updates that we will be talking about on the uh, live streaming reactions for Hell in a Cell. We got some surprising things that we finally um, finally come up with. So be on the lookout for that. We're going to be talking about that during the Hell in a Cell live streaming reaction. So make sure you're there for that. It's going to be a good time, man. But let's check this out. Appreciate all the love and support on the channel, and uh, let's do the damn thing. The big box. The big wrestling box. The boxy big meat punch meat angry box for very cross wrestlers. It's hell in a cell time once again, and everyone's yep. looking forward to it, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. What do you mean, no? Uh, yeah. What do you mean, Hell in a Cell honestly tends to be one of WWE's weakest shows and has been for the past, checks note, 10 years? Uh, you might disagree with that statement. Maybe you love the big box and the wrestlers having a match in the big box and something, something devil's playground. And if that yeah. is the case, then by all means, write down that opinion on a piece of paper. Put that piece of paper in an envelope. Put that envelope in your trouser pocket. And then you put your trousers in the washing machine on the hottest cycle possible. There are a lot of reasons why the <laughs> words Hell in a Cell don't strike fear into the hearts of man anymore and if you give me 10 minutes of your life i'll run them through in a concise entertaining and incredibly handsome way i'm adam Hayden right. from hearts fun known here are the 10 biggest mistakes wwe made with hell in a cell and also while you're here why don't you check out our other 10 biggest mistakes videos yeah, we've done sure one about roman to, reigns uh, one about john cena one about the wwe championship that was a lot of fun honorable mention kennel from hell technically not a hell in a cell match i suppose but i'll be dog damned if it doesn't get a mention unforgiven 99 wwe took a hell in a cell match put a cage match in the middle of it and between the two crammed a bunch of man eating huh? woof woofs and what they thought would be the ultimate oh, violent thrill that. ride but actually Hearing turned out to match. be a morass of boring wrestlers and dogs who either didn't give a shit about yeah. being scary or gave way too much of a shit about doing a literal shit right in front of a Yeah, pig. I believe one of the dogs had uh, ended up uh, using, using the restroom on one on the floor. It's like, up, oh, gotta take me a dump right here. <laughs> what worry about the people in the match? In crowd, a wonderfully terrible <laughs> no idea that everyone should see at least once in their lifetime. Number 10, Undertaker destroys CM Punk. Hell in a Cell has been an annual pay-per-view, sorry, premium live event since 2009. And don't worry, yeah. we'll get to why that is a terrible idea. But as yeah. an annual tradition, it started out fairly badly. The very first match of Hell in a Cell 09 was a cell match pitting The Undertaker versus CM Punk for Punk's World Heavyweight Championship and it's an absolute clinic in how to emasculate a world champion. Punk had graduated from the year's best feud with Jeff mm -hmm. Hardy even going as far as to banish the charismatic enigma from WWE after a Montreal screw job rip off at breaking point the month before. Punk faced off against Deadly Locks, the master of the box and it went nipples north for Punk. Not only was he so scared by Taker that he started the match by falling on his bum but Undertaker dominated the champ, battering him around the cage and pinning him in a mere 10 minutes. It's not the Damn. worst cell match, but it was a flat opener and sad. It was a sad, unworthy end to the reign of Charles Manson Punk. Number nine, the stupid Raw ones. WWE created Hell in a Cell in 1997. <laughs> I mean, created is in air quotes. It's heavily influenced by war games, yeah. but sure, let's go with it. Point is, WWE realized they were onto a good thing and frankly got a little giddy with it, airing for some reason three Hell in a Cell matches in two months in 1998. Good point guys you can never have too much of a good thing now eat these five cakes i baked you eat all five all five right now you f 
fucking coward. Two of these matches were on Raw, Taker and Austin versus Mankind and Kane, and Mankind versus Kane, neither of which went over 10 minutes. And also, Mankind versus Kane ended in a no contest. Way to immediately suck all the special out yeah. your special box. Looking back on that last sentence. One sentence. It's, it's like Vince, he just has this infatuation where if there's something good, let's keep using, overusing it instead of just, I don't know, using it sparingly to keep its, like, its uniqueness. When you start using gimmicks over and over and over and over and over, people get used to it and it's not unique anymore. I actually really hated saying that. Granted, one of these three matches in the two months was Taker versus Mankind, aka the best one, but yeah. still, that's too much, man. Number eight, Rybrad Maddox. Let's be clear, Ryback's mental. And since leaving WWE, yeah. he's been kind of on a crusade to scrub the words Ryback is good from the internet. But for yeah. a brief time, he was as close to the next big thing as you could get with the most Goldbergian of Goldberg pushes. He demolished jobbers and politely asked for more like a veiny Oliver Twist, boasting an undefeated streak going into Hell in a Cell 2012, WWE booked Ryback to fight WWE champion CM Punk and in doing so, booked themselves into a corner. Fans yeah. weren't quite ready for the intimidating but still green Ryback to be world champion, but also WWE didn't want to beat Ryback, but also Hell in a Cell is a stipulation that used to be anyway, specifically designed to avoid cheap non-finish shenanigans. Yeah. WWE solution, evil pixie ref. Before he was a sweater vest wearing GM, Brad Maddox was a twinkly eyed referee with the kind of punchable face reserved for people trying to run a local kids hockey league out of business. The finish what? saw Ryback dominate Punk, set him up for the shell shock, for Maddox hit him in his mad dicks before a cheap roll up victory, a lame duck solution to a problem WWE didn't need to give itself. Number seven, the hologram. Yeah, that, that whole situation, they definitely pushed Ryback a little bit too soon. Like his push was cool at the time, but when you start booking him in WWE championship matches, there's only one way you can go about this. You, you, most likely, you got to give him the strap if you're booking him to be this unstoppable force, but they didn't do it because they booked themselves in a the corner. So, yeah. Graham, help me, OBD and Canome bros. You're my only hope. God, they had Bray Wyatt do some stupid shit in that yeah. big mailbox, didn't they? So the feud of the year in 2014 was Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins fighting forever inside the ruins of The Shield. The two yeah, had great, great chemistry, a bunch of stellar matches, a white hot feud, and for the first time in years, a Hell in a Cell match actually felt like it, it earned was, that it, stipulation. It How did WWE blow off this blood feud? A feud which had seen Ambrose repeatedly lose. Well, they put Ambrose over Rollins, strong and clean, a big violent redemption, conquering his demons inside the Devil's Playground. Lol, not really. They had Ambrose lose after being distracted by a creepy hologram orchestrated by the impish prince of party city pranks bray wyatt <sighs> who then attacked dean and yeah that's the feud dean ambrose moved on to fight bray wyatt a bunch losing again via exploding television <laughs> can't believe he left for aw you really can't number six charlotte beat sasha for no it just makes no sense <laughs> when you say it out loud or you write it on paper you just be like they really did that, huh? You really killed the momentum of a few by doing that, huh? Okay, all right reason. Hell in a Cell 2016 saw a number of firsts for WWE. The first ever women's Hell in a Cell match. The first time women main evented a pay-per-view on the main roster. Uh -huh. And to celebrate all those firsts, WWE did something they had done many times before. And have Charlotte Flair win for no reason. After everyone wanted Sasha to win at WrestleMania 32, but Charlotte did. After yeah. everyone wanted Sasha to win at SummerSlam, but Charlotte did. The stage was set. Blow off the feud and mark a big historic moment with a much overdue babyface win in Boston, which just yeah. happened to be Sasha Banks' hometown. Wrestling is so easy. It's so easy. But WWE take a perverse pleasure in taking a puzzle that's almost complete and punching a hole through it in the name of the dreaded unpredictability. Charlotte hit the natural selection, beat Sasha, again in Boston, and just... Why, though? For a weirdly complicated pay-per-view exclusive singles match winning streak that nobody but Ric Flair actually cared about. Yeah. Number five, Braun Strowman is forever that ruined. Doesn't make oh, sense. Oh, man. Doesn't make you guys sense. remember from mid-2017 to mid-2018 when Braun Strowman was briefly the most over man in the whole yes. company, like proper special attraction over yeah. before he eventually left to control his narrative, his biggest WWE accolade being worst universal champion in the belt's history. Yeah. What happened in between those things? A terrible heel turn yep. the man who once kicked out of four men trying to pin him at Elimination Chamber earlier 
that year, yep. suddenly needed the Drooty Dogs help to win matches, and at Hell in a Cell 2018, got attacked by Brock Lesnar, and then I guess just died. The precursor to the all-time worst Cell ending a year later, and don't worry, Ooh, we'll get to that. We're going to get to that one, I'm sure. <laughs> bank contract to fight Roman inside Hell in a Cell in 2018. Brock Lesnar appeared, attacked both men, and then the match just ended. Yeah. After a white-hot reaction at SummerSlam just a few months earlier, Strowman had gone from being unstoppable to stopped. And the third... The thing is, Strowman got over because people hated Roman's character so much. He got mega over. Like, it was ridiculous how over he was because people despised Roman that much at the time. Just for them to do that. If they would have put the championship on him... On uh, Braun Strowman, then it would have made sense. It would have worked. You strike while the iron is hot. <sighs> Third most important competitor in a fucking singles match. Also, thanks for buying your tickets to a show without an ending, I guess. Yeah. Lol. Number four, murder. 1999 was a super weird year for WWE when the company, bolstered by Vince Russo going maximum Vince Russo, nearly reached the ludicrous bollocks critical mass that would beset WCW in 2000. So many weird things happened in 99. That was the year Al Snow was tricked into eating his own dog. Steve oh. Austin became CEO. <laughs> Triple H married an unconscious yeah. woman. Vince became WWF champion. The higher power nonsense. Boss man wrecked Big Show's daddy's funeral. And the beat goes on. One of the weirdest, most 1999 things to happen in WWE that year happened at WrestleMania 15, where, as part of a relatively heatless Ministry versus Corporation storyline, Undertaker fought Big Boss Man oh, inside yeah. Hell. Yeah, he definitely tried to kill him legitimately <laughs> on a pay per view. Well, actually, I think he definitely did. <laughs> in a cell, and it was incredibly boring until, checks notes, they hanged the Big Boss Man. You know how this story goes. The match ended, the brood attacked, strung up Big Boss Man with a noose, the cell rose, Boss Man struggled, then stopped struggling, which, you know, in the case of hangings, tends to mean that the person is f***ing dead. Yeah. Before the lights went out, happened in front of a bunch of kids, too. Stupid company. Number three, all red everything. Oh, oh yeah. no, thought WWE in 2018. Here no one's go. afraid of Hell in a Cell anymore. How do we fix that? Do we reduce the number of Hell in a Cell matches that we do, only feature them as the blow-off to a blood feud for maximum Thank you. violence and Thank Participation. You. Now I thought WWE just paint it baboon ass red and call it a day because I guess red is the color of hell, isn't it? Yeah, it's just ugly. It doesn't make up for the fact that Hell in the Cell matches aren't bloody anymore. At best, it just looks like everyone's resting inside a big toy. And at worst, yeah. it's really visually distracting and horrible. And you can't what you can't see. Look at that. I can't see anything. The change came about in 2018. Again, just a top year for Hell in the Cell. And for some reason, it just hasn't gone away. It's, Why hasn't it gone away, WWE? Awful. Why awful. haven't you stopped making your biggest deathmatch stipulation out of red vines? Why are you ripping off TNA Steel Asylum? Which is also sh**. I, I don't know. Number two, the one with the clown. I said I just don't know. Look, at some point, <laughs> this is just griping about wrestling rules, and that's a black hole made of contradictions and well actuallys. WWE never remembers any of the rules of their own stipulations. Eliminated wrestlers can't eliminate people from the Royal Rumble, except when they can. Yeah. Survivor Series eliminations happen individually, except when sometimes the ref just disqualifies everybody. The referee's decision is final, except when they're shown an instant replay. Nothing matters. Yeah. But Jesus Christ, the entire point of Hell in a Cell, the entire point of it being an unsanctioned, no other option, nuclear option for a feud. Two wrestlers are going to go into the box, and it doesn't stop until someone fucking wins. Yeah. For two straight years, WWE booked a no contest end to the least no contest stipulation they have. The Braun Strowman one was bad, but at least the show went off the air before people realized it was bullshit. A Hell in a Cell 2019 in a match. The most, the most hated, probably Hell in a Cell of all time. They made a mistake, once again, of booking Bray Wyatt the Fiend in this match. Because at this time, people were tired of Seth Rollins. They, people were just tired of him. They didn't care for him no more. So, what they decided to do is book a Seth Rollins, a face Seth Rollins that people weren't behind anymore, against Bray Wyatt's new character gimmick that people were just... They were enamored with, like, holy shit, this seems something cool. We want to see more of him. And what do they do? They go ahead and book him in the match in Hell in a Cell. There's only one thing you have to do now. Bray has to win the match. And not only did they book this supernatural being in this match, 
Seth Rollins literally hit him with every finishing move he possibly could, and the dude didn't kick out. He didn't kick out. You made him impervious. He... I, <sighs> Not to this day, that's when things for the fiend was never right. They messed it up. At this moment, they had messed him up. Between Seth Rollins and a psycho clown, the match was called off for being too much, man. Seth yeah. Rollins hit the fiend with a bunch of being Q. The ref, who had never seen a Hell in a Cell match before, apparently, decided that playtime was over in the devil's playground and fucking boo forever, insulting to the customers, insulting to the wrestlers, completely demolishes every single reason to ever get excited about a Hell in a Cell match yep. ever again, although that's long since been the case ever since number one, making Hell in a Cell an annual pay-per-view. I said it and I called it this it's the number one reason once they did this it was over for hell in the cell sorry premium live event the worst thing they ever did to the box was build a show around it it's a yep. terrible decision previously it was a feud centric special attraction remember the anticipation and surprise you used to feel when Ooh, a rematch yeah. would be announced between two guys who hated each other and it would be inside yeah. hell in a, in a cell, cell. Yeah. and the announcers would go oh my god no anything but that yep. oh shit. Undertaker Mankind, Triple H, Cactus Jack, the Armageddon Six Man, they'd be huge reveals striking terror in the hearts of the heels. Now it's just, are you feuding? All right, do it in the box. Giving us a slew of Hell in a Cell matches that had no business taking place there and barely use a stipulation at all. Classics like Mark Henry versus Randy Orton, Sheamus versus Randy Orton, Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton, Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt, CM Punk versus Ryback, fucking twice. Just massively overexposed the match, robbed it of all threat, turned it from a treat into an obligation, crowded out the actual good ones like yeah. Seth Rollins versus. That was like, oh, last year, Seth Rollins versus, uh, um, versus Edge, a hell in a cell outside the pay per view? A feud that has gotten very personal to the point where it needs to happen? What? It can be good? Easily one of the best matches WWE produced last year. It was the best match on Crown Jewel last year. This match was great. This match was fantastic. This is what it's supposed to be for. Not an a, a annual pay-per-view edge individual cell matches have been terrible errors but no bigger mistake has ever been made with hell in a cell than this please stop doing it every year wwe please stop making us not care and that's our list what do you think there the biggest go, mistake man. wwe have made? that that is a uh that is a that's a very good list i think he was spot on i think a lot of us can agree with adam here that this is this is the case the number one thing that's killing Hell in a Cell as a pay-per-view as a, is the, the actual thing. The actual, it being a pay-per-view, it should not be a pay-per-view. It should only be a one-off match that we rarely see. Only feuds that demand it. Maybe once a year. Maybe. And that's pushing it, to be honest with you. But if you do it once a year with a major storyline feud, that's it no more than that it doesn't need to be we don't need whole pay-per-view we don't need 10 of them in one year just probably one one hell in a cell in a year will make that hell in a cell seem like okay this is very important this is a feud i've been really wanting to see how they end it let's get it going instead of making it a damn pay-per-view every single god dang year and we just sitting there and be like oh Another hell in a cell. Woo. Some of them been good. Most of them kill the momentum of the like the 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 weight of a hell in a cell. So comment down below. Let me know, man. What's the main reason why you guys feel like hell in a cell isn't like the match itself isn't really what it should it used to be. I think a lot of us can agree that uh making it a pay-per-view is one of the reasons and also let me know what's your worst hell in a cell match you've ever seen i think a lot of us will probably agree on the same one that we uh seen in this video and what's your favorite hell in a cell match let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support road to 90k appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one